There's something approaching from the distance that you can't stop. It can completely destroy cities and kill tens of thousands of people. It looks like another big wave at first, but as it gets closer, you can see it's not just big, it's huge. It's a tsunami. You should probably run away from it, but instead, we're going to surf it. Uh, seriously, this can't be good. Is surfing a tsunami even possible? And have people done this before? Well, we better get started. This is what if, and here's what would happen if you went surfing on a tsunami. The biggest wave that someone has surfed on was 24.4 meters tall. Tsunamis can be around this height, but for our purposes, let's go a little bigger and say ours is 30 meters tall. If you do want to surf on a tsunami, and we don't recommend you do it, you'll most likely have to travel to Japan or the Philippines. This is because they're located in the Ring of Fire, an area in the Pacific Ocean where tsunamis are most likely to occur. But hold up, how do tsunamis occur anyway? Tsunamis are different from the usual waves caused by wind and tides. Tsunamis form due to volcanic activity, but most often after an earthquake occurs in the ocean. If an earthquake happens in the sea that's 6.5 or higher on the Richter scale, you can expect a tsunami to come heading for land. This massive wave will start deep in the ocean and build its way up to the coastline, quickly gaining speed and power. Experts say that a tsunami can move up to 800 kilometers per hour as it reaches the shore. So be prepared, if you can, for a wave as fast as a passenger jet. And although tsunamis start as small bumps deep in the ocean, as they reach shallower water, they become much more massive. So, how would you surf on this thing? Well, let's hope you have a friend that's just as daring as you because the wave is moving so fast, you'd need your friend to drive up the wave on a jet ski while you hitch a ride on the back. If you manage to get to the top, you'll quickly realize that this wave is completely different from any other wave you've surfed before. That's because tsunami waves don't break, as opposed to regular waves created by wind. A breaking wave curves and cascades onto itself, making it the perfect wall for your surfboard, but generally speaking, a tsunami doesn't have this quality. Apart from the massive size and the incredible speed of the tsunami, surfing on it would be nearly impossible because there wouldn't be much for your board to grip onto. But you're up here now, so what do you do? Well, your best bet is to really hold on for dear life and hope for the best. Let's be real here, there's no way you're going to be able to surf on this monster. You'll quickly be hurled towards whatever coast the tsunami decides to bring you to. And you probably won't just land on the beach either. You could be several hundred meters or even kilometers inland. It could hurl you against the side of a bus or into a building. And after the tsunami brings you there, that won't be all that happens. After it tosses you inland, the waves will pull you right back out into the ocean. Now, it's not only you in the tsunami, other people, cars, and even entire parts of buildings will all be forced into the ocean, causing even more destruction as they slosh through the tsunami's path. You may think it's over now, but that isn't the case. A tsunami isn't just one massive wave, it's multiple waves. A tsunami can last for up to an hour, with waves up to 30 meters continually hitting the coast while destroying cities and killing people. So once you lose your surfboard, you'd be in the water with everything else being pushed back and forth from the coast and back out to the sea. You'd keep doing this until you eventually drown or die from getting hit by debris. So although surfing a tsunami would make for a pretty gnarly story, maybe we should just stick to the regular breakers for now. One person who might be a contender to tame a tsunami would be legendary big wave surfer Laird Hamilton. And if you were to try and surf a tsunami and somehow survived, you would probably get pretty badly hurt and be in a lot of pain. But what if you couldn't feel pain? Then you could probably do it. But we'll leave that story for another What If.